Hey everyone, this is AB. Welcome back to Cypress series. In today's video, we are going to learn about custom commands in Cypress. So this is one of the very important topic in one of the very often asked interview question also. So what does custom command means? It means basically, let's say you have some repeated lines of code, which is getting used in multiple test files. So what you can do, you can create a custom command for that, right? And use it in your test file. Instead of writing that multiple lines of code, you can just write one command and it will be done. The other advantage of creating custom command is maintainability. It also improves your test code. So it makes it easier to update. Let's say in case you have created a common custom command for login and in future you want to change the username. Instead of changing in every test file, if you have a common custom command, you will just change at one place and it will be updated at others. And then the readability, it also increases with custom command. It makes your test scripts more readable. And then the efficiency, if you're using custom command, it will increase your productivity also. It will save your time also. So you don't have to write the same line of code every time. What you can do, you can just make use of custom command and it will save your time also. So these are some of the benefits of creating custom commands in Cypress. So Cypress comes with its own API for creating custom command. You just have to use its syntax, which is cypress.commands.add. And then you can use that command in your test file directly. So today we will see all this in detail. We will see some different approaches of creating custom command and what are the misconceptions also around custom command. We will we will see everything in detail today. First of all, let's see. We have the sample test case, which I've already written. So the sample test case, basically what it does, it navigates to a page, which is an open card e-commerce website. We enter our username password over there. And then we click on the submit button. We search for a MacBook product and then we verify if that product is visible or not. So what I will do, I will show you. So this is a sample website. We have used the same website URL in our test case also. And over here, we will enter username password and click on login button and we'll search for a product. So let's, so let's run the test case first. And then we will see how we can create custom commands and what are the common steps which we think will be repeated in our test case. Fine. So let me, so let me run the test case. So let's select the browser from here. And now this is my test case search product. Let's run it. So you see over here, the test case is getting passed. We are entering username password. And then clicking on the submit button, searching for a product and then verifying if it is visible or not. Okay. The text is visible or not. So this is our test file. Now, if we go back to our code, so this is our code. So over here, let's say we have multiple test cases in which our prerequisite to login first. So in order to log in, what are the steps for the login from here? So from line number three till line number six, this is the common code, which is required for login. So in login, what we are doing, we are navigating to a page, entering username, password, and then clicking on the submit button. As of now, I have single test case, but let's say you have multiple test cases. And in all the test cases, you are using the same line of code. So what you can do, you can create a custom command for it. So in single test file, we can also use hooks also, right? Before each or before. But in case you have multiple test files and you don't want to repeat the same line of code in every test file, in that case, what you will do, you can create a common custom command for it and then use the single command for log. So let's see, I'll show you how we can do it. So I'll cut it from here till my submit button. So I have removed my four lines of code from here. Now I'll go to support commands.j. And in this file, we want to add a new custom command. What do you have to do? You have to use a syntax, which is cypress.commands.add. And then you have to provide the name of the custom command. For example, I want to, I want to name it as login. So login and then a callback function over here inside it. I will just paste my code, right? So this is my code to log in into a page where I'm navigating to a page and entering all your user details. So now in our search product, what we will do, we will not use those four lines. Instead, we will use cy.login. So this cy.login, what it will do, it is basically this four lines of code. So you have created a wrapper around it. So in this case, we are just using cy.login. We are not providing this four lines of code. So let's say you have multiple test cases, you have multiple test files, you just have to use single command, which is cy.log. You can access this common commands using cy. that command name. So over here, our command name is login. That's why we have used login. Fine. So what we'll do, we will run our test case again and we'll see if it is working fine or not. So let's run the test case. Let's go to terminal, enter npx Cypress open, select end to end testing, select your browser, and then let's select our test file. So you see, it is being fine and there is no error over here. It is actually fetching your data from commands.js file, right? So this is one of the way to handle it. The other way is 
let's say you don't want to hard code your username password over here so there can be case you have multiple test scenarios and for each test scenario the username password can change in that case what we can do we will just remove this we will parameterize it we will pass username password from our parameters so in that case we are not going to hard code the username password we are going to pass it as a parameter so let's do that also pass over here email and password and then i will remove it from here fine and inside it i will pass the parameters so for password, my parameters is password and then this is email. So what is happening? So in this case, in my login command, whenever I'll call my login command in my test file, I have to pass email password in that as a parameter. And that parameter is getting mapped over here. So whatever email ID you will pass in your test file, it will be mapped over here. It will be passed to this type command. Fine. So let's update login command over here also. So in this case, I have to pass my username password, right? So I already copied my username. So yeah, this is my password. So now if I run my test case, this should also work. So this is our second approach. I will rerun the test case now. And let's select search product. So you see in this case also, this is working perfectly fine. There is no error. It is passing your username, whatever we passed in our test file. So this is a second approach. Now the third approach is, let's say you don't want to hard code your email ID and password in your test file. In that case, what you can do, you can also create a fixture file and then pass it using your fixture file. What we will do, we will use the fixture file. I have already created one login.json. We already have a fixture file. So I'll use this one in order to pass my username password. So this can be done in two ways. Either, either you can pass this in your test file over here or what you can do, you can pass it in your commands.js also. So let's see both the ways. So the first way is I'll import my file. You can use cy.fixture also or you can import it directly like this. So I'll import like this. So login details and path of the file. So it's inside my fixture folder. So fixtures and login.json. Fine. And now what I will do, I will fetch the email ID from here. So inside this, what I will write, I will write like this login details dot email and login details dot password. So where is it coming from? So this is my path login.json. In login.json, we have two keys. One is email, one is password. And both the values are getting passed over here in your login command. Now, if we run our test case, this should also work fine. Let's see. So I will rerun the test case from here and let's run it. So you see in this case also, this is working perfectly fine. There is no error and it is a successful test case. The other one is over here, we pass the fixture file directly in our test case. In case you want to pass it in your commands.js, we can do that also. So inside your commands.js, what we will do? We will import our fixture file. I want to pass it as login data. From where you want to import it? We want to pass the path over here. So what is the path? So this is under fixtures folder and login.json and inside this I will pass login data dot email and login data dot password fine and I will remove my parameters from here why we are removing it because we are not passing parameters from our command we are passing the value inside it and then this is getting fetched from our login.json file same file fine and now I will update my test case I will remove this parameters because now we don't need parameters for this we are passing the values directly from our commands.js. Now let's run this test case also and let's see. So let me rerun it and let's see. So yeah, we can see over here, this one is also getting passed. So we saw multiple approaches, how we can create a parameterized custom command, how we can create a custom command without parameters and how we can pass the value from our fixture folder. This is about custom command. But there is one more thing over here, which people often get confused. So they think we have to write all of our common commands and commands torches. No, that is not the case. Because let's say you're working in a project, you have a common framework, and there is possibility you will have lot many common commands also, right? There can be multiple common commands. And let's say your file, let's say your file increases with 500 lines of code then it is not a good approach to keep everything in a single file. We have to we have to create multiple files for it. So what you can do, you can create a separate JS file and then you can write your custom command in that also. So it's not like you have to always write your common commands in command.js. No, that's not the case. You can create multiple JS files and then you can use those files. Then you can use those common commands in your test file. But for that, what you have to do, you have to import that in your end-to-end.js file. So let's see one. So I'll create one JS file and we will create one more common command for it. Okay, let's see. So inside my support package, I will just create it as login.js. And inside that, I will just 
copy the same code. So I'll remove it from my commands.js so we don't get confused. So now my command.js is empty. Now I'm passing inside my login.js. So I will show you if we use directly cy.login, it will throw an error. What error you will get? Let's see that. Let's run our test case and let's close it and we will rerun our test case. Now it will throw error because it will not fetch that cy.login. You see, it is saying it is not a function. So in order to tell Cypress, yeah, this is a common command. This is a common function. What you have to do. So what you have to do, you have to write inside your end to end. You have to import that file. So we will write over here import. And what is the file name? The file name is login.js. So this is my login file. People often get confused with this concept. They think everything needs to be written in commands.js. No, that's not the case. In your project, you can create multiple JS files, but you have to import those files in your end to end.js in order to use it as a common custom command. Now we will rerun our test case and we'll see if it is working fine or not. Let's rerun the test case now. So you see, this is working fine now. There is no error on the page. It is fetching your username, password. It is passing all the login details. And this is the concept about creating custom command and create created using multiple approaches. It's not like you have to hard code all the values. You can parameterize it. You can pass it from your fixture file also. So you can do it as per your requirement. So yeah, in today's video, we saw how we can create custom command. We saw multiple approaches to create custom command. And then we also saw if we can have multiple files to create custom commands or not. Okay, so that's it for the video. And if you really like the video, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.